to the eighth annual uh, spatula engineering presentations. Again, um, like like in past years, the kids have created a spatula that's supposed to be you new, you new, unique to uh, the industry. They're supposed to come up with uh, a couple different ideas to incorporate into one spatula, so it's not just supposed to be a single type uh, type spatula. So it's not supposed to do one thing; it's supposed to do multiple things. They also, when they did this um, inside the classroom, the kids created patents. So in other words, if a kid created a square head and spatula, another student could not use that spatula if he patented it or put it on the board. So it adds a whole new element to the whole patent process. Um, we weren't looking globally, so some of the patents, obviously, if they're you know in the world, you know we're going to see it here today. But it kind of does it in the classroom. It changes the dynamics of how things happen. Uh, this year we had 28 patents, I think. Um, some of them were pretty wild, some of them were pretty normal, so that's pretty good. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming. Thanks for the judges for taking the time out of your day and coming and, and judging this. I'll come up between each student, introduce a student, um, maybe set their PowerPoint up, help set PowerPoint up, but uh, for the most part, like I said, I want them to, to do well. Judges feel like you can ask as many questions as you want. Um, there's no time limit. Um, and I'm going to bring them all back up in the end, and I want to maybe pick a winner. So, all right, with that being said, Tyler Jones is your first candidate um, with his bachelor. All right, so I did the best bet because um, I have made a bottle opener and it looks like the Batman sign. All right, so my handle is made out of ABS plastic, and the spatula, of course, is made out of steel. And I use, to keep the spatula in the handle, I use uh, home and decor super glue. And it is a spatula. It's also a knife because you can see I serrated this side so it can cut. Of course, a bottle opener, and then it's also a functional drink coaster. And then this is a video of the bottle opener working. And this is the video of the spatula cutting the hamburger we drill. And then the last video is of just flipping burgers being a spatula. And a picture of it being a functional drink coaster. Shout out to Laos, sweet tea. Some pictures of my spatula. And overall, it's going to be $49.99. It's a knife, bottle opener, the drink coaster, all in one. That's it. Judges, do you have any questions for Mr. Jones in the first round? Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, your handle, you mentioned it was attached with super glue and foam. Is that correct? Uh, okay, so what I did was in the vendor program, I cut a hole inside of it. I put it inside, but I used super glue around the edges, so it's, it's locked in pretty good. Okay. Is there? Did you mention foam? or is there No, I just said about the home and the core foam. super glue. What is the temperature, um, allowable temperature for the plastic, do you know? Uh, no, I'm not sure on that. It doesn't really transfer that much heat down to it though, because most of the heat was right here in the spatula part. How much testing did you do to determine? Uh, we made, how many burgers did we make? We made like six, to, like six to eight burgers we all did in one day, and it didn't really get too hot, honestly. Thank you. Yep. How about your it? hand? Did your hand uh... You didn't feel any heat? No, not at all. Did you have a hard time gripping the handle turn? Did you have enough leverage? No. I uh, When I first did this, it was a lot thicker. And then I went back and I cut some of it off so it's a lot easier. It's just got a lot more room to be able to grip it, firmer to flip it. It's just a different idea than what most of the kids did with their uh, handles. Because I just didn't want to do the same thing that they did. Would you? Uh, 
think that the, the serrated edge uh, might be a safety issue with uh, around? I thought it was, but when you feel it, it doesn't exactly feel like a serration because I kind of nicked off the top part of the serration, so it's kind of like not a point, more like a rounded point, so it's still a knife, but it's also safe to just run your finger right across it. Does the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Does the shape of the handle cause, does it make it awkward, or if you shaped it a different, instead of the square, would it make it easier to handle? I yeah, it would have been uh, easier to grip if I made it a different shape, but it's just, the other kids did a different handle, like shape, and I just didn't want to copy them, I just want to be different. Just didn't want, just want to stand out. Was there, was there a specific problem that the square handle addressed? No, it's not really, it just, it wasn't as easy to grip with it being thicker as like the other handles, so that's why I cut it off more, so to be able to grip it a lot easier. No, I mean the, the square, squareness of the, it's, it's, it's a very short spatula, and yeah. there's the square handle. Does the, does the fact, and it's unlike any other spatula I've ever seen before, so does the, does the square serve any purpose other than being different? I mean, you can, not really does it serve a purpose, I mean, it, you can use it as a drink coaster if you wanted to, but it really doesn't serve any other purpose. Yep. Very nice, thank you. Thanks. All right, thank you, Mr. Jones. Next up, we have Mason Brady. I have to take a second to get his uh, PowerPoint real quick. Is that right if I start? I don't really use it much. Okay, so you all have four shirts, right? Um, yes. Okay, so it's basically the same information. I made the Supreme spatula. As you can see, my spatula says Supreme on it. I made a bulky handle. It has a spatula, obviously. And you can also take the bolts out and switch it with a fork or anything else if you wanted to. Um, it has a bottle opener, which also doubles as a hanger or a hook if you wanted to hang it on your wall. Um, and that's basically what my spatula does. It costs me about $13-$14 to make it and I'm going to be selling it for $20-$25 dollars because um, if you don't know anything about Supreme, uh, Supreme is a clothing company which they partner up with a lot of big name brands like Nike, uh, Air Jordan, stuff like that and the owner of Supreme, he paid a lot of celebrities to start wearing Supreme clothes so now uh, up there and it's on the, I think it's in the brochure as well. 
there's, you can see an example of a Supreme brick. They literally took a red clay brick, put Supreme on it, sold it for $1,000, had 1,000 people buying it, just a brick. So, for selling it to you for $25, you have the potential to flip it back around for 100, all the way up to 1,000 really dollars because there's insane people who would like to spend that much money on a red Supreme stamp. So, I think that's it. Thank you, Mason. Judges, do you have any questions for Mason? So, so your intent was to sell a brand rather than... Correct. I got you. Yes. Is there anything unique about your handle, other than it's red? Um, it's a uh, has finger grooves, so you can grip it better. Um, it's made out of wood, and uh, I knew wood was going to be more fragile than the ABS plastic, so I put an extra piece of steel down the middle of it right here, as you can see. So uh, that's. All my handle has to it. Is there some screws at the bottom of that? Right here? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so there's what? screws. Okay. And bolts. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Is that how you? Well, that's how it? you can change it. I can change it. <coughs> so you can change it just by taking the screws out. And Material, you said that's uh, fireproof enamel on the uh, for the yes. paint. Um, how do you have any idea how long that will last? Paint has a tendency to wear off and, and that type of thing. I mean, durability of that. I know the enamel will last longer than most paint. Um, I'm not sure how long, but uh, and I know enamel is pretty strong stuff, so I can't imagine. I'd imagine that like the spatula head or the pointer would break before the enamel would wear off. So the I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay. The the Supreme name yes. is an existing brand. Is an existing brand. But it's not your brand. Not my brand, no. So basically wouldn't just, you be marketing something under somebody else's brand? Kind of, yes. Well, yes, Typically, that either requires a lawsuit or a large amount of <laughs> licensing fees. Is that something you considered in your in your design? Because um, if they're selling a brick for a thousand dollars, they're going to want well, there, for a spatula. <laughs> um, there's actually a lot of separate smaller companies that put the Supreme name on without Supreme permission. There's a lot of fake. Supreme clothing that you can buy for twenty dollars, and it's the same thing essentially, but just customized. It's how they um, sell it is a customized personal uh, hoodie or shirt. So knockoffs. Yeah, essentially, yeah. <laughs> That's not something to aspire to. Right? <laughs> yes. For cleaning that, uh, do you need to disassemble it to, for cleaning? Yes, I would take off these and put them in the dishwasher, hand wash them there, however you want to do that. To secure that, do you need a tool or just finger tight? You can just finger tight and it'll be fine. Had you considered an attachment that didn't require <coughs> fast, a threaded fastener so that you maybe a little smoother transition between? 
components? I had, but I think the fastener is just the simplest to build, at least. The simplest to build. Any other questions for Mr. Mason? Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Mason. Appreciate it. All right. Third on the list, Mr. Jeff Rupert. Side, uh, there's magnets that are all into it, and they're strong industrial magnets that are hard to pull out and keeps it in. Any idea what the, the breaking force uh, required to remove the handle is? Uh, is that measured? I'm not exactly for sure. I know it definitely doesn't want to come out. So, how does it in your picture when you're using the brush? It looked like you know there's a hand on the handle and then another one down there sort of to keep it in place would it I mean if you just use just had your hand on the handle would you think that that brush would come out if you were scrubbing oh it? no it's just so you can get more leverage in I just did that to get more leverage to clean the grill a little better 
So what's your suggested retail price then? Uh, <coughs> I, I suggested it around like maybe 45 to 50 to get a nice good profit off of each one. And your cost is approximately 34 and you're selling it for About 30 minutes. 39. Any last questions, Mr. Rupert? All right, thank you much. Our last contestant, first in the alphabet order, Mr. Trey Adler. Spat 3000, you'll get three pieces. You'll get the sauce brush, the spatula, and the handle with magnets included. It has five functions, and one is to flip patties. It can hang in two ways. It can flavor your burger, has a sharpened blade, and it can stand straight up. The first one is flipping the patty. It's just a normal spatula that way. It can hang in two ways. On the left side, it's magnetized, and then on the right side, it hangs. <laughs> Third one, they can flavor your burger when you want it. It has a sharp blade right here in case you need to cut something on your burger. It can stand straight up so you don't get any burger juice everywhere. For later in the future, when we sell this more, you can make different switchable pieces. Like you can make like tongs if you wanted in this. Yeah, you can change the color of it. You can change the size, customize the handle, like with designs, or have different shapes in your spatula head. This is a video of me flipping the patty. And then in the next video, this is me putting A1 sauce on my hamburger. Overall, it's the most comfortable. It has many different functions for it. It's really easy to switch out for a low price of $39.99. It's put together very well. Judges, please ask a few questions, Mr. Adler. Mr. Adler, yeah. we all chuckle. This has nothing to do about engineering, but just the presentation and marketing. Yeah. Make sure whenever you do a PowerPoint, you don't have anything political or anything. Yeah. Like <laughs> you don't know who your audience is. <laughs> and it may just close down what you're trying to uh, do. It's very similar to one of the other ones we saw. Yeah. Can you talk about the differences? Are there going to be any patent infringement lawsuits here? <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, I thought the sauce brush idea was more efficient. And then he, on his design, he has it as a trapezoid, and mine's a rectangle instead. And mine has three ellipses. And neither one of you patent the. Uh the handle idea? No. Okay. We kind of work together on this. How do you, uh, any of you, when you're going about this, how do you determine what the length of your spatula is going to be? Are you limited by your 3D modeling? Or? No. No? You could, you could make it any size, but the first time I made it, I only had this part 7 inches, and it was too close to the grill. Okay. So I designed it to make it 13 inches total.
This is similar to, the handle's similar to other ones in that it's square and not ergonomically rounded in any way yeah. to hold it. Is that, a, is that a limitation of time or, or machinery to be able to make that? Or is that an actual, is that a design choice? Well, I had to design it this way because the rectangles were magnet and this was the only way it could really work. I didn't have a wide variety of magnets I could choose from. So do you see a, a problem with the size of the handle fitting you know, somebody with smaller hands cause it an issue? I think it feels pretty comfortable. You can hold it if you want to. Are you good? Yeah. Right. All right, Mr. thank you. Again, I appreciate all you guys and your job did a very nice job. I'd like for all of you to leave. Thank you for leaving. Thanks. Um, we will can talk to the judges here a little bit, come up with a winner, and I'll pull you back in. Judges, you should have all the information. As you see, some of the kids are off the wall, some of the kids are pretty straight and narrow, some ganged up on each other. Um, you can kind of see where everything is at. Um, you can kind of see where Trey there talked at the end about the, you know, he used the word trapezoid and different angles. That's because somebody patented what he would call it another on, you know, I mean, so he, someone called it a square or a triangle, so he couldn't call it that, so he had to call it something else. And you saw it in, um, I think Jeff used a couple of those different terms as well, where another kid had patented a problem or patented a different shape, and so he had to change the way he thought about it. It's just a different approach. You have to kind of think outside the box and come up with different solutions uh, to the same problem. So, like I said, um, some of them, like I said, are, are pretty good. Um, some of them, like I said, this is a great learning experience. And I appreciate everything you guys have asked without a dead on. I just want somebody else to ask that question because uh, that's that's what needs to happen. Like I said, it's one thing come from me, but come from somebody else, it, makes, it hits home a little better. So, all right, so we'll come up with the winner and I'll get these guys back in. All right, you guys come up here with me. After much deliberation, we picked a winner. We appreciate you guys' work. You guys did great. Um, the judges were impressed with what you accomplished. Okay, just like Survivor, the winner is. Jeffrey. Congratulations. Thank you guys very much.